Oh, hey kids, how you guys doing today? Today I want to talk a little bit about our food security. There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm. A place where you're always welcome. Come on, Lily, let's go feed. Some interesting things have developed over the last couple of days. The uh, Smithfield Hams plant in, uh, here in America was sold to China. They closed the plant and moved everything over to China. I also understand the Tyson Foods meat processing plant has been shut down due to 28 of its employees testing positive for the corona flu. We hear in the news about farmers dumping uh, produce, farmers dumping milk. Um, all of this is going to have a very real impact in our food availability coming here in the near future. Uh, Jan and I have talked we're going to be putting in a pretty good sized garden this year. Uh, as much as we can fit, try to grow as much of our own vegetables. Of course, you know, I've got my duckies and you know, we're growing those for eggs. <clears throat> but I'm also, uh, you know, trying to hatch out more ducks to expand the flock, as it were. Uh, and, well, right now I'm also increasing my chinks by selling off some babies. In fact, I just sold five of them this morning. So my, my little business plan... Uh, of uh, hatching out my duck eggs and selling baby ducks worked beautifully. I sold five eggs for 25 bucks today. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I had five eggs. I hatched them out to baby chicks or baby ducklings, and I sold them for 25 bucks. I think, you know, uh, could you imagine? Could you imagine $25 for a half dozen eggs? But by doing a little value added work to those eggs, by hatching them out in my brooder, I was able to substantially increase the value. Okay, <clears throat> so what does this have to do with food safety? Well, it has to do with being able to create your own food supply. Uh, that, I think, is probably the most significant and important aspect of being a homesteader, is in creating your own food supply. Not only are you creating a supply that's safe, meaning free of glycophosphates and non-GMO and organically raised and free range and all those, all those you know, warm, uh, touchy-feely terms and concepts that we all deal with. But, you know, those warm, touchy-feely concepts have some very real impacts in our health, uh, tremendously real. So not only do a lot of people like to homestead because of the ability to be able to create healthier food, but let's face it, just creating food in the first place. So I see a lot of these people uh, going out and raising meat chickens where they'll buy 50 or 100 birds at one time, raise them up in a batch, process them, and put them in the freezer. Well, you know, that's fine. But you're still having all your eggs in one basket or, in this case, all your meat in one freezer. Power outage, you lose all your chickens. Not a good idea. I would prefer, and, and what I've always done, is uh, I let my meat be out there on the hoof, or on the claw, or on the foot. You know, um, just because you have 50 chickens for dinner, or availability for meat, doesn't mean you need to eat them all at once. Doesn't mean you need to process them all at once. Have your, you know, your, your pot available out there that you can heat the water anytime you want to. Have a plucker, or you know, if you're only doing one bird, pluck them by hand, it's not a big deal. Um, don't go out and buy 50 birds, process them all at once, stick them in the freezer. You're still at risk. Have 50 birds wandering around out in your yard. You decide you want to have a chicken tomorrow, tonight, after everybody goes up onto their roosts, you go into the hen house and you know, with a light, and you reach up and you grab one off of the perch. And there you go, you've got your bird, you put it in the dog crate or whatever till morning when you're going to go ahead and process it. Um, in any event, I'm going to set up my brooder. I'm going to show you here how I do that. Hatching out eggs, trying to increase the, the size of my flock to provide more food. Now, my incubator, which as you can see is right here, my my ovibator by Genesis, or Genesis by ovibator. Um, it'll hold about 42 eggs comfortably. Duck eggs. It'll hold more chicken eggs. Uh, but it'll hold about 42 duck eggs comfortably. Uh, the last batch that I did, I did not have a very good um, fertility rate. I ended up having to, I candled them 
after they'd been in the incubator for a couple of weeks. And a lot of them were not process, pro progressing at all. They simply weren't fertile. My drakes out there are kind of young. This was their first season of breeding. They just haven't done an adequate job. <clears throat> I'm hoping this batch will do better and be more uh, fertile eggs. But, you know, it, it, once you have a rooster that's doing his job and, and getting all the eggs fertile, so, you know, 40 new birds on the farm a month, that's a, that's a permanent supply of meat. I mean, if you ate, if I ate a duck a day, right? I can make, I can make 40 baby ducklings a month with one incubator and I would have to eat, uh, you know, so let's say, okay, you put 40 in there, let's say you only get 30. That's a duck a day. There's dinner every day. For, for and what does it cost me? I have five laying ducks out there. Five laying ducks outside. These baby ducklings that I'm hatching now, they will be at butcher size, processing size, in about ten weeks. So there's they spend uh, one month in the incubator, two months out running around the yard picking on bugs and a little extra food, two and a half months, something like that. And then we butcher them, and we can have them available to us. And we can butcher them at any point. We can you know, take them as a younger duckling if we want a small one, or we can wait till they get full size. We can even let them run around the yard for a while. We don't have to harvest them as soon as they... It's not like, you know, oh, this is the, the 58th day. we got to harvest them on the 58th day. No, you don't do that. Let them be out there running around. When you want one, take one. Uh, good uh, flock management tells me that I only need so many drakes for the amount of hens that I have. Uh, I like to keep two drakes available uh, on the property. I think that's a good amount for the few number of hens that I have. Um, I would say a 1 to 10 ratio is about right for ducks. One drake to 10 hens. Two, if you only have one drake, you want to back up. So two for, you know, up to 10 or up to 20 hens. Um, but, you, you know, once you have that set up, and, and it doesn't matter. You can do it with ducks. You can do it with chickens. There are breeds of chickens, you know, like the... Plymouth, Plymouth uh, Rocks, uh, the Rhode Island Reds, the White Rocks, the Brahmas. Um, you know, I like the big, heavy, uh, big, heavy chickens. Um, you can do the same thing with them. Collect, collect the chicken eggs, bring them in, and incubate them. Here, where I'm at in an urban environment, it makes a lot more sense for me to do that with ducks. Why? Ducks don't crow. They don't disturb my neighbors. Matter of fact. Unless somebody walks by or drives by the property real slow, they would never know there were ducks here. In fact, the lady that came today and picked up the baby ducklings from me was surprised that we had a property right in downtown. So even if you have a small house, uh, and, you know, a small yard, and you're right in town, it doesn't take a lot of room, and you can set yourself up with a permanent food supply. So if the grocery stores are out of meat, you raise your own. And you have the benefit. You Not only do I have meat, but I have eggs too. So, Anyhow, let me show you how I go ahead and set up the brooder. And uh, then we'll come back and, and finish the conversation. So today we are putting the brooder back together and starting our second batch of ducks. Had tremendous success. Uh, with the eggs that were fertile, we had 100% success rate. With the fertile eggs, we had 100% success rate. That's awesome. <clears throat> so I'm really thrilled with the job my uh, Hova Bader Genesis is doing. So let's go ahead and set it up, shall we? Well, I'm going to set it here on my desk. This is where I've been keeping it. It's uh, someplace where I can keep an eye on it. It is protected from the weather and protected from the sun. So I don't have to worry about getting any kind of, you know, like direct sunlight on it or anything, which I think is part of the reason why that little bubble incubator I had last time failed, so... So now I have to load it. So I'm just going to start here. In fact, these are still warm because I just, just got them in from the ducks. We're going to start here and put these guys in um, to the incubator. Now, let me show you something about how I have to go about loading it. So this is the egg turner. And this has a... This has a little arm, so this bar here has got to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And as you can see, it kind of encroaches in this channel. So because of that, I really can't load it up full with eggs. 
So let me show you what I do. Alright. Two over there, two over here in that row. And then three in all the rest of the rows. Now you notice these eggs are not washed. They're not super clean. Um, I waited until um, I, I was confident that we had a mature and growing duck leg inside before I washed them. Now the reason I do that is when a duck lays an egg or a chicken lays an egg, it has something known as bloom on the on the eggshell. It's a oily, mucusy sealant basically that goes on the outside of the very porous eggshells. Without that, the egg inside, or the baby duckling, or yolk and sac, or whatever you want to call it at that point, um, is susceptible to whatever makes contact with the shell. The shell is very porous, so anything that makes contact with the shell will get sucked right inside. It'll actually wick stuff into it. So, something to be uh, concerned about. So, anyhow. We'll just continue loading this up. In my last hatch, I noticed that my silver apple yards all seemed to hatch out at the end. They took a day or two more than all of the <coughs> um, rowans did. However, this batch of eggs here should be all rowans. There should not be any silver apple yards in this batch. And the reason being is because my silver apple yard hen went broody, and so she is setting on eggs um, as we speak right now. She's setting on eggs right now. So here we go. And that's it. That's, that's fully loaded. As you can see, we are, we are fully loaded there. We got all the eggs loaded up. And we have room for the arm to move back and forth <clears throat> and not interfere with the eggs. I probably could add another egg or two, but I don't know. I don't want to get greedy. What do I have? I have 6, 12... Um, so 36, 78, 39, 40. I have 40 eggs in there now. Let's finish the setup here. We now take the lid. Get this power cord out on the side. <clears throat> get the lid. I'm going to put the lid so that the control center is out this way where I can see it easily. You notice the lid's got a notch here. That's to help with this power cord for the egg turner. And that just sits down right on top. And once I have that on there, I like to give a little pull to that egg turner cord. Make sure it's all up and out of the way. And now all I got to do is, uh, is plug it in. I can hear the egg turner moving. And we've got the cabinet set up. Now I'm set for 99.7. Humidity is at 69%, 99.7. I want to take that down to 99.5. And uh, the last thing I need to do is add water. And that's all there is to it. Now, I leave this alone, completely alone, for about three days, at which point I check the, the humidity and add water. About every three days, i got to add water to it. <clears throat> I'll do that over the next 28 days. Well, 20... 25 days and on the 25th day we'll remove the egg turner and uh, stop start the pipping watch so check them out in the meantime I'll get on my laptop and uh, on my calendar my schedule and I will uh, you know detail 28 days and 25 days so I know when to do that but there you go guys setting the incubator up is just that simple and it just sits here by itself uh, pretty much undisturbed except for me adding water to it for 28 days. Hell of a deal. And the result of the last batch was I got a whole bunch of baby ducks. 
as you can see, a whole bunch of baby ducks. The yellow ones are my uh, silver apple yards. They're silver apple yards, and the dark ones are the round ones, and there's also six chickens in there, but all of those are my hatch from the last time. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. They all seem to have gotten themselves unpacked and together and are healthy and doing beautifully. Well, so there you go. A very successful hatch with my ducklings this past batch. <clears throat> Talking, though, about food security. Someone's got a loud engine. Talking about food security, though, I only have five hens laying eggs right now. So I get five eggs a day. So if I save my eggs for a week, I have enough eggs to load the incubator and hatch out a whole new flock of ducks. Um, and then the other three weeks out of the month, I collect the eggs and I have my eggs for breakfast and, and, and then some. Because I'm getting, you know, five, six, sometimes seven eggs a day. That's more eggs than I can eat. That's more eggs than Johanna and I can eat. We give eggs away to people. Um, if I have an eggs go bad I, or a cracked shell, I fry them up and give them to the dogs. Um, I actually had saved a whole bunch of eggs for this hatch. I saved them. I saved more than what I could fit in the incubator. So the older ones that have been sitting around for a while that I've saved, I went ahead and fried them all up and I'm giving them to uh, to one of the labs to put a little extra weight on her. So, uh, so it's a it's a real solid source of food security. I have secured simply, simply with just five hens and a couple drakes, I have secured a meat supply. Now, it would get pretty boring eating duck every day, but frankly, I can hatch out 30 ducks a month at infinitum, guys, forever. Forever, I can hatch 30 ducks a month. So I can sell some, I can eat some, uh, I can do the same with chickens. Exactly the same thing with chickens. I can do exactly the same thing with turkeys. Um, I can do exactly the same thing with geese. Um, you know, if I did this with turkeys and I had 30 turkey eggs in there uh, every month, you know, turkey, chicken, duck, um, I've got plenty of meat to survive for our family. So no matter what happens, no matter how many meat packing plants get shut down, no matter how much the national food supply gets threatened, I have secured protein for our little family. And enough, frankly, that I could feed our family and both of my son's families. So that's me and Johanna, my two sons, their wives, and between them, the three grandchildren, soon to be four, soon to be four grandchildren. And all of that can be secured by a very small little flock of ducks and an incubator. So it's something for you guys to think about. Now, in addition to that, we're going to put in a big garden, uh, give us some fresh vegetables. Uh, the next thing we have to work on is securing our duck food supply. That's going to be the key to all of this. It's one thing to have the ducks, quite another to have a way of feeding those ducks. Now, if I had a larger piece of property with a pond on it, those ducks would become pretty self-sufficient. It wouldn't require much feed at all. Right now, I'm spending about $10 a month to feed my ducks. Uh, but what happens when that supply chain breaks down? What happens when I can't buy that feed anymore? So this is why I'm pressuring myself to try to buy a larger piece of property where I could put in a field, and it wouldn't take much. It wouldn't take much to maintain a, a duck flock. You know, an acre or two, I could grow enough uh, corn, millet, soybean, um, uh, you know, any number of wheat and barley and a whole bunch of different grains that I could plant that would be more than enough to feed my duck flock for the year. So it's not expensive, it's not difficult to get yourself a secured food supply chain. So I, I would suggest you guys think about it, research it for yourself, figure out what you could do in your situation and, and give it a shot. Because with all this stuff going on with the COVID flu and now all the meat supply and food supply being disrupted, we sleep well at night knowing that we're going to have plenty of food tomorrow. I wish you could say the same. So, anyhow, this is Grandpa signing off. I hope you enjoyed this. Be good, be careful. We'll have more for you in the future. Thanks, kids. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe, and if you would, share. Share these videos with your friends. Help me build up so I can get some more subscribers and give us a big, give us a big thumbs up. Thanks, kids. We'll see you later.
Uh, how about them toad suckers? Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all sure make them happy. Hug them mug of toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in they mouth. I be a toad sucker knowing a duck it. You just find an old toad and you rear back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye.